What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's solve this math question that says find the sum of the real solutions of 3 to the x minus the square root of 3 or raised to the x plus 4 plus 20 equal to 0. Well, our first step will be for us to apply the law of indices to what we have here. Well, the law of indices that says when I have a to the m plus n, this is the same as a to the m times a to the n. So we're going to be applying this to this expression. So this becomes 3 to the x minus, now writing this in this form will be the square root of 3 raised to the x times the square root of 3 raised to the 4. Very good. And then plus 20 equal to 0. Now simplifying further, we have 3 to the x minus the square root of 3 is same as 3 to the power of half. And this is raised to the x, so I'm going to be raising this to the x times the square root of 3 is same as the 3 to the power of half. And this is raised to the 4. So raised to the 4 plus 20 equal to 0. Very good. Now our next step will be for us to apply the law of indices that says when I have a to the m and this is raised to the n, this is equal to a to the m times n, which is the powers multiply, which will result to a to the m times n is mn. So I'm going to be applying this to what we have here and what we have here. So this will be, we have 3 to the x minus, now applying the law of indices here, this will be 3 to the 1 over 2 times x is x over 2 times this is 3 to the 1 over 2 times 4 plus 20 equal to 0. Now you see that 2 divided by 2 here is 1 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this simplifies into 3 to the x minus 3 to the x over 2 times, this is 3 squared, which is 9, and then plus 20 equal to 0. Very good. Now, our next step will be for us to apply substitution, and we're going to be choosing the number that is most complex. Now, comparing, you see that this number is the most complex number here. So we can say, let's 3 to the x over 2 be equal to p. So that means whenever we see 3 to the x over 2, we're going to be substituting p. But what about 3 to the x? Well, we can do that by taking the square of both sides. So when I have 3 to the x over 2, and I have to take the square of the left, and also take the square of the right, you see that from the law of indices, according to this law, the powers multiply. So that this cancels out this, then I have 3 to the x to be equal to p squared. So we have two substitutions here. 3 to the x over 2 is equal to p, and 3 to the x is equal to p squared. Now let's rewrite this equation. So 3 to the x is p squared, so I'm going to be writing that here, p squared minus. Now 3 to the x over 2, that is p, so I'm going to be writing p here, times 9, so times 9 plus 20 equal to 0. And now simplifying, we have p squared minus p times 9, that is 9p plus 20 equal to 
zero. Very good. Well, the most wonderful thing about this equation is that it can be factorized. So I'm going to be opening two brackets, having writing two brackets that are multiplying equal to zero. And then P times P gives P squared. And since I have negative and positive here, the negative takes precedent. So I'm going to be using negative here and also negative here. Very good. So now five times four gives 20. And their addition gives nine. So this is five and four. Very good. So we have two cases here. We have five P minus five equal to zero, or we have P minus four to be equal to zero. So now let's solve these two cases, one after the other. So for the first case, so case one, we have P minus five to be zero. So we can just get the value of P by moving negative five to the right hand side, which becomes positive five. So the value of P is five. What about case two? So for case two, we have P minus four to be equal to zero. And then to get the value of P here, so this is the first value and this is the second value. So to get the second value of P here, we just have to move negative four to the right to become positive four. Very good. So we have two values of P. Now let's recall from our substitution. Recall that we said let 3 to the x over 2 be equal to p, right? Very good. It is easy for us to get the value of x when we take the log of both sides. But since I have a base of 3 here, that means I'm going to be taking the log base 3 of both sides. So I'll take the log base 3 of the left hand side which is 3 to the x over 2 this is equal to i'll also take the log base 3 of p very good don't worry we're going to be substituting back the values of p but let's just get x first so now applying the law of logarithm that says when i have the log of a to the y this is equal to y log a we're going to be applying this law of logarithm here. So this, ex this expression can now be written as x over 2 log 3 base 3. This is equal to log p base 3. Very good. And as we know, log 3 base 3 is equal to 1. So that means I have x over 2 times 1, which gives x over 2. And this is equal to log p base 3. And now to get x, I just have to cross multiply. And when I do that, x will be 2 log p base 3. Very good. So now let's substitute our p. Let's start with the first one by saying when p is equal to 5, that means our value for x will be 2 log 5 base 3. And when p is equal to 4, that means our value for x will be 2 log 4 base 3. Very good. But what did the question ask us to find? The question said, find a sum of the real solutions of the equations, right? And these are the real solutions of the equation. Now let's find their sum. So the sum, so the sum will be, we have the first one, 2 log 5 base 3, plus we have the second one, 2 log 4 base 3. You notice that 2 is common, so we can factor out 2, open bracket. Now 2 log 5 base 3 divided by 2 is log 5 base 3, plus... 2 log 4 base 3 divided by 2 is log 4 base 3. Very good. And now let's apply the law of logarithm here that says when I have the log of A plus the log of B, 
this is the same as log a times b very good so let's apply this here so this will be 2 outside times we take the common log so we take the log base 3 and then we multiply the numbers 5 times 4 and this will result to a final solution of 2 log 5 times 4 is 20 base 3 and there you have it well feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video go ahead and give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos and like i always say until next time take care